So, in terms of overall time spent learning, besides university or work, my plan is to spend 1,000 hours on data science related projects and learning throughout 2023. I did 1,000 hours of data science so that you don't have to. And by the end of this video, you will have my four most important realizations from this process. By the way, implementing these lessons more than double my pay in 2023 alone. When OpenAI released their API, thousands of startups emerged. At the time, the publicly available version of ChatGPT did not have the ability to read uploaded files like PDFs. People identified this problem and several of these AI startups focused on developing an interface that would allow the user to upload a PDF. On the back end of their software, all they would use is a pretty standard Python library to extract text from the PDF, then get ChatGPT to read that output to allow querying of the PDF. It was effectively a glorified wrapper that was eventually less useful when OpenAI integrated this function natively. And a lot of people scoff at these startups that eventually failed, but it doesn't change the fact that a lot of people made thousands just by implementing simple functionality that people needed. That's because these companies were willing to execute. Data science is filled with a lot of intelligent people, but one of my biggest takeaways is that the sooner you realize that data science isn't a coding competition or a maths competition, the sooner you will start making progress in your career. The goal is never to be the smartest person in the room, but the person who makes the most useful tools to their stakeholders. I mean, that's why for most of the projects that we do, we end up using pre-built libraries rather than developing complex algorithms from scratch. The libraries exist and they're available to everybody, but it's up to you to choose the correct one to solve a specific problem. Aim to become an elite problem solver who has great data skills rather than a glorified calculator with a heartbeat. Be a great executor rather than spending all of your time thinking without executing. Utility will beat complexity every single time. In January 2023, I was a run-of-the-mill data science grad with six months of experience under my belt. I had a wide range of surface-level knowledge of the different concepts, but no depth anywhere. I hated how slowly my career was progressing and every time I applied for a job, my CV got lost in a pile. But within eight months, I had a mindset shift that led recruiters to consistently reaching out to me first. <laughs> it started when my boss gave me a dense, simple, natural language processing project to work on. Just getting sentiment from customer comments. I did this using pre-built libraries, but my boss loved the project and he wanted me to build it out even more. I had to do a bunch of research into different NLP subtopics and explore how I could make them even more useful. Without even trying, I had slowly become the NLP guy. I was no longer generic. Now all of a sudden, when I applied to NLP specific roles, I was hearing back consistently. Your key takeaway here is that data science allows you to map your own career trajectory. You have almost complete autonomy in deciding what areas you specialize in and how you avoid being another boring, bland CV. You could sit down today and decide that, okay, in two years, you want to be an amazing data scientist who is known for their work in computer vision within healthcare. What skills do you have now? Maybe it's just a half-finished certificate in Python from DataCamp, and becoming great in your subfield feels like an impossible job. But the thing is, there aren't that many data scientists in the world, and a lot of data scientists are specializing in different areas. So if you knuckle down and put in the hours, you could genuinely begin to have a CV that does stand out from the crowd. But it's stressful deciding what areas to dig into specifically, so here's my framework. I have a rough goal of where I want to end up. After that, it's a research phase. I look into what are the building blocks for somebody who wants to become good at these things. And these are usually my go-to resources for that question. Then it's always the cycle. Learn the theory, do a follow-along project, brainstorm ways a business could use these skills, then implement my version of this to a domain that I'm interested in, and iterate from there. Never forget, you decide what you are. This August, I figured out something that changed my mindset permanently. Before then, when I applied for jobs on LinkedIn, I never heard back. And I'll tell myself, oh, it's because I easy applied. No one ever hears back when they easy apply. But it soon became obvious that I'd been lying to myself. That month I decided, hey, I've been working at a marketing company for over a year now. What if I apply some of the marketing principles that I picked up to myself? I changed the formatting of both my LinkedIn and my CV from just being boring statements of my skills to how my skill set could help to solve a business's problems. Suddenly, not only was I hearing back when I did apply for jobs, I even had 12 recruiters reach out to me first, <laughs> which had never happened. It taught me the lesson that we forget as data scientists. Every day we make decisions based on how people, brands, and things communicate themselves. Think about it, most phones can do the same things. Call, text, internet access, take pretty great pictures. And most data scientists can do the same things. Use Python, use SQL, be good at maths. 
but just like how you might pick an iPhone because it's simple enough for your brain to use, or a Samsung because it can do everything, or a Pixel for its great picture quality, employers will often pick based on how you communicate your skills and how they prioritize what's important to them. Communicating your skills is even more important when you actually have the job. To be an effective data scientist, you have to be looking for data-driven solutions to business problems. Being able to communicate clearly and intelligently how you thought about that problem, solutions you considered, and the solution you landed on will be vital in your career. The clearer you can communicate, the more likely they will pick your solution, and you'll slowly become the go-to person for data problems. Inevitably, you'll begin to climb the ladder. Wake up, code, sleep. Wake up, code, sleep. This is the routine that we think we need to follow. It's a trap that I've fallen into, but this trap limits us from exploring other opportunities that will see us advance quickly throughout our careers. More importantly, looking into the most valuable resource you can have in your journey, people specifically data scientists. Being around our people, other data scientists, will help us to grow quicker even than slowly relying on getting the reps in. When we're researching data online, it can feel like there's a data scientist around every corner. But in the real world, it's rare to meet other data people and that does limit our growth. The two times my learning accelerated the most was when I was at university, where there were hundreds of other people who were studying data science. So I learned a lot from their ideas and how they solve problems. And after that, it was when I started attending data science networking events in in person. You don't have to be this sleazy guy at networking events to benefit from them. You can just have conversations about data with experienced people who will teach you things that are not found in textbooks. If you want to grow quickly, I recommend finding a community of data scientists, whether it's online or through networking events in real life. The site that I use to find events in real life is meetup.com, but that might be different depending on your country. So ask around where these events are found where you're from. Actually, this need for community is why I'm grateful for the small community we do have here on YouTube and why I'm looking to take it to the next level with other people who want to work towards being great data scientists. If you want to join the waitlist for that community that I am building, sign up through the link in the description below so that you'll be the first to know when it launches and you could have access to a global network of data scientists. But there is a big difference between data science in theory and in the real world. And if you want to know the biggest lessons I learned in my first year as a data scientist after university, click on screen now.